for a call, but I'll jump on it in one second. Okay. My apologies. Is that Adam? That's Adam. Okay. That's fine. Adam will note your attendance. Um, and I uh, want to thank everybody for joining us. Uh, this is uh, Children's Health Environmental Health Month, uh, you will join the Maryland Lead Poisoning Prevention Commission. I'm Ruth Ann Norton. I am the current chair of the commission and I represent uh, child advocacy and uh, nonprofit work uh, in, in this issue at the Green and Healthy Homes Initiative. We're very glad to have you today to join us. It is also the month that we celebrate Maryland Lead Poisoning Prevention Awareness Week. Um, but as I like to Remind us every day is Maryland Lead Poison Prevention Awareness Week and all of our policies and practices in housing programs in general in the state of Maryland are really targeted to creating safe, healthy, and affordable housing. And I'll um, note that we have Nicola Tran uh, on with us today. Welcome, Nicola, because uh, I know that it's the mission as well, the Maryland uh, Housing <laughs> Department. Um, I'm going to ask Cliff Mitchell. Uh, from the Maryland Department of Health to take the wheel uh, along with Wendy Phillips for a lot of the meeting today. Um, but I'll try to get through to, um, we have some awards that we do uh, want to give and I'm gonna try to hang in there through that because these are very uh, thoughtful and deserving people. Um, so if we could, I just ask that we do a quick roll call, Wendy, of the commissioners present for the public. Um, and so I know we have Adam Skolnick. If you could take it from there and uh, help me save my voice, it'd be great. So Adam, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself if you can. Or he's I on know. a call. Yeah. We know he's okay. here representing yeah. Okay. Um, Barbara Moore. Hi. Hi. I'm Barbara Moore. I'm a pediatric nurse practitioner and director of the lead poisoning program at Mount Washington Pediatric Hospital. Commission member. Cliff Mitchell. Clifford Mitchell, Maryland Department of Health, Environmental Health Bureau, uh, Commissioner. Mangela Paul. Good morning. Mangela Paul from Maryland State Department of Education from Office of Child Care, Commission member. Thank you. Na Nadia Hutchinson. Hi, Nadia Hutchinson, organizer with Young, Gifted, and Green. Uh, let me pause there and just say we welcome Ms. Hutchinson to the commission, her first meeting as an appointed member of the commission by Governor Moore. Uh, thank you for all of the amazing efforts that you do in community and welcome uh, to service on the state commission, Nadia. Thank you. Glad to Nicole, be here. Nicole Hart. Good morning. Nicole Hart, Deputy Commissioner, Homeownership, Housing, Preservation, Baltimore City Department. City Department of Housing and Community Development. And I think we're also welcoming Nicole for uh, officially. Um, yeah. And uh, the, is the swearing in happening tomorrow? Is that right? Tomorrow, yes. Okay, big party tomorrow for anybody who wants to go to Nicole's uh, swearing in. Uh, but <laughs> welcome, uh, Deputy Commissioner, to the and appreciate your service. Susan Kleinhammer. Good morning, everybody. Susan Kleinhammer, accredited risk assessor, uh, lead tech services and commission member. Thank you. And Ali Nestat, if I'm pronouncing that right. Ali, you're muted. Sorry, hi. Yeah, we're I just doing introductions. Oh, hi, I'm Ali. I am, um, uh, my son has lead poisoning. Um, <laughs> okay. So yeah, <laughs> I came to learn about everything and help out as much as I can. Thank you. Thanks, and Ellen. last is ah. Ruth Ann Norton, who is our chair. Yep. And, and I'm here. This, uh, thank you. <laughs> um, and thank <laughs> Ali, uh, Nicole, and uh, Nadia. We will be doing a new member um, orientation. We tried to get it off during the last month. We will get that done this month. Uh, and appreciate your help as we start to have a new strategy uh, toward bringing uh, to end the toxic legacy of lead. Every year, the Maryland Department of the Environment and the Commission um, uh, host a uh, an awards recognition uh, for people who have worked in, working in the field, and we want to lift them up. Uh, Tyler has one that he's going to do, and I'm going to do 
two of them. Is Tyler present? Um, I'm here. All right. Tyler, so Tyler is actually in the house. I'm all in right, the house. Tyler, I'll let you do yours uh, first. Here, and here's my, sure, here's my fancy award that I'm sure it's hard to see on the screen. Um, but uh, the award I'm presenting is for Susan Kleinhammer with Lead Tech Services. Uh, we appreciate Susan for always being engaged and volunteering on uh, numerous subcommittees. Uh, we appreciate her view on both sides of the aisle and uh, her considerate approach in uh, her work with the commission. Uh, her contributions are very important to the commission and I appreciate her dedication to health, safety, awareness uh, and professionalism. Thank you, Susan. Thank you very much for that award. Um, I just wanted to say that I would be amiss if I did not acknowledge individuals who deserve recognition in their efforts to end childhood lead poisoning that preceded me. Um, the creation of this commission exemplifies the complexity of this problem and the solutions of childhood lead poisoning. Uh, I came on board in 1987 when I was hired to be a part of a pilot program to quote unquote test the waters of a new set of abatement regulations. Uh, for those who are regulators, it was Comar 260207 uh, that are still MDE's fundamental abatement uh, regulations. Um, I watched and participated in the concept of, quote unquote, it takes a village. Individuals from all walks of life, health professionals, housing experts, regulators, politicians, came together to create a new approach as to how to react to childhood lead poisoning. And notice I said react, because back then that's pretty much all we could do. We weren't preventing it. To get to the point of prevention, the minds of many people had to be changed. People had to be willing to listen. Those people who were willing to put their toes in the water for the first time, I'd just like to mention Jim Keck, who first started Lead Tech Services. He had worked for the Baltimore City Health Department as an assistant commissioner. He was instrumental in getting Baltimore City's Health Department abatement regulations to be adopted. And then there was Susan Gio and others in the Maryland Department of the Environment who were instrumental in getting similar regulations adopted at the same level. Mark Farfell from the Kennedy Krieger Institute, who was the principal investigator of a major study to identify alternative lead hazard controls. Alfred Singer, who is a lawyer and property owner, led the Baltimore City Property Owners Association to convince landlords that they had to be a part of the solution, not the problem. They all came together just as we do today to think outside of the box to create a path forward and that we are still following this path today. For that, I thank you for this award and I am humbled. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Wendy, let's uh, go to Wendy Boone. I don't know if Wendy Boone is on. Uh, no, I had not heard a response back from uh, her, but I think we'll there are two people who are not to able to be here, but I think deserve true yeah. credit as really dedicated public servants. Um, one is Wendy Boone from the Prince George's County Health Department, who has been there every day of the last three decades plus. Um, to ensure that the children of Prince George's County and across, across the county and has been a mentor across the state in public service, in public health, not just for lead poisoned children, um, but for, for the public health of citizens of Maryland. Uh, Wendy is an exemplar of a professional and a good human being, and we are honored uh, to honor her and thank her for her partnership. Um, we will make sure that she is presented this award in person during Lead Poisoning Prevention Awareness Week with the Prince George's County Health Commissioner. And um, we have a hand raised of uh, probably Cliff Mitchell, I would imagine, <laughs> wants to say something. Yeah, so Ruth Ann, thank you. I, I just want to add, um, for those people who have had the privilege of working with Wendy, and we've had the privilege of working with Wendy in the health department for many years, uh, it, it is, it will come as no surprise to anybody, but as a mark of sort of where, where Wendy is, um, during COVID, as you know, uh, in many cases, health departments rightly had to shut down home visiting because we, we, there were concerns about um, uh, the spread of COVID. Um, and at one point during um, uh, COVID, 
uh, Webby and I chatted because she, uh, she throughout that whole process, safely but diligently kept on going to the homes of, uh, of uh, children with, with lead poisoning, making sure that they received services in a safe fashion, uh, but she did not basically skip a beat or lose a day of work um, or stop doing what she was doing um, for that entire period. And uh, this is not in any way meant to denigrate the other efforts of the, all the other staff across the state who do this, but she was sort of amazing in the amount of effort that she put into ensuring that every single child, regardless of where they lived in the county, was going to receive services uh, uh, if they were lead poisoned. Well, we will make sure that she receives this award during lead week in Prince George's County. And um, she's probably at work right now, which is where yeah. all of us have to be. Um, the next awardee, if you don't mind putting that up on the screen, um, uh, probably more than anyone else in the state of Maryland is responsible. Uh, for the fact that we have uh, one of the strongest, uh, best, uh, and most comprehensive set of legislation and statutes in the country uh, for lead poisoning prevention, and that is Sandy Rosenberg of the 42nd District uh, in Maryland. Uh, Delegate Rosenberg has been a mentor, an advocate, a champion of the rights of lead poisoned children uh, for prevention, pushing for prevention, uh, pushing for best practices. I cannot tell you the number of times that he has uh, written uh, and communicated uh, continually through this day, 40 plus years of working on the issue of lead. Uh, we will find a way to honor Delegate Rosenberg in person, uh, but he is not here today because he is celebrating Rosh Hashanah. And if I can, please, I want to wish a happy new year to all who do celebrate uh, Rosh Hashanah, and uh, we cannot celebrate a champion of this issue more across the country uh, than Sam Rosenberg, and we are grateful for his efforts and his efforts to support all of the agencies um, that are working and all of the community advocates uh, working on this, as well as uh, tenant advocacy rights. Um, so our, our gratitude to Sandy Rosenberg, as I think uh, a true, true champion of uh, this issue. So thank you to all of the, all of the awardees uh, for the work. There are so many others who are not uh, on this list uh, and so many um, who are great, uh, truly great professionals and conduct themselves as great professionals in this work. Um, we can, uh, Wendy, we need to get to the approval of the minutes and uh, for the commissioners, if the, who have uh, read the minutes. Thank you, Wendy, for getting them out in a timely basis. Um, if there are any uh, objections, amendments to the minutes, uh, please raise them. Hearing none, uh, if I could get a motion uh, to adopt the minutes. To move. To adopt the minutes. Adam, uh, Adam was first. <laughs> okay, uh, Adam, uh, thank you. And a, a motion, a second, please. Second. All right, Dr. Mitchell, thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay, wonderful. Um, we want to have uh, updates from commissioners. A couple of things I'd like to say, and then I'm going to, as I said, turn this over and ask Dr. Mitchell to chair the balance of the meeting. Um, I hope today um, that we will get everyone to uh, weigh in on what they're working on, um, especially for our new members who are really working diligently on these issues um, and provide uh, those updates. But one thing that I wanted to bring to the table that I would like the commission to work on uh, with uh, together is the uh, HUD Office of Lead Hazard Control and Healthy Homes has published a notice uh, on its seeking public input regarding HUD's intention to revise the elevated blood lead level threshold 
uh, in HUD's requirements for pre-78 assisted housing. This is public, publicly supported housing, um, housing choice voucher, et cetera. HUD intends to revise its EBL thresholds uh, to meet the CDC threshold level of 3.5. Uh, for children under the age of six, consistent with the CDC uh, standards of reference level. When HUD last amended its EBL threshold in 2017, CDC's blood lead uh, reference value uh, was five. So there will be an impact of moving to 3.5, a positive and important path to prevention. Comments are due April the 11th. Uh, the Green and Healthy Homes Initiative is writing comments we are happy to share with the Commission um, and we will be circulating those um, and ask that uh, folks look at that. Uh, we're happy to do an independent set of comments uh, as well uh, or support those coming from the state, uh, but definitely wanted to uh, get some sense of that. Um, and then we will be uh, submitting um, those and we will share this link for those who would like to look at and comment and whether you'd like to go in uh, with comments that may be coming in from the state or the Green and Healthy Homes Initiative or independently, please uh, let us know on that. I know later uh, we'll, we'll be talking a lot about Lead Poisoning Prevention Awareness Week. Uh, I'm going to encourage uh, Commissioner uh, Hutchinson to talk about the efforts that are being made on the uh, lead service line replacements uh, and uh, Commissioner Hart to talk about the efforts being made in the city uh, on that, uh, that are continuing uh, to advance. Uh, and I do want to thank the city for its ARPA investments as well uh, in those efforts, which have been quite important. Um, so uh, at the uh, West Stewart, uh, Shadi Musa, and others from GHHI will weigh in. The last bit before I get off um, uh, and turn this to Cliff is I did want to acknowledge, and I've said this to Tyler Abbott, uh, that we should acknowledge uh, that the Green and Healthy Homes Initiative was awarded a uh, $400,000 plus dollar contract, which was approved by the Board of Public Works yesterday uh, to restore uh, legal services and tenant counseling services under the Maryland Lead Risk Reduction and Housing Law. Um, and we will begin uh, efforts immediately on uh, the effective date of the contract uh, being yesterday. Um, uh, but uh, we are going to be bringing back a, a legal services attorney to work productively uh, to protect the interests of families and children uh, in these efforts and to ensure proper enforcement of the law and uh, to make sure tenants understand their rights and responsibilities um, in this work. Uh, Barbara, yes, ma'am. For the legal services, is that I mean, limited to Baltimore City or is that statewide. throughout other counties? Statewide. Great, thank you. Okay. Tyler, I didn't know if you wanted to say anything else on that, but I wanted to, for transparency, to disclose that. Sure. I was going to say a very similar thing, so I won't uh, spend too much time on it, uh, but look forward to working with you and your team, and uh, looking forward to having a kickoff here soon. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Mitchell, if you could take it from here, I'd be in everybody's best interest um, to do that yes. and give my, um, uh, give my voice a break. And if Wes Stewart or others want to weigh in on the revision to the threshold, uh, I'll let them do that. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ruth Ann. And of course, we all wish you a speedy recovery uh, so that you can uh, uh, feel better as soon as possible. Um, uh, thank you so much, everyone. So um, if we can turn to the ag agenda, uh, the next, um, uh, the next item is uh, commissioner updates. And uh, Wendy, did you want to go ahead and uh, provide some updates? Yeah, so um, I just want to give some updates and also ask some questions of those in attendance. And so application status, um, Fred, I see that you're on. I don't know, let's see, you are muted, so you're going to have to unmute yourself. Did you happen to apply yet for your membership? I did not. Okay. 
And then Ruth Ann, have what's what's your status on your application? Have you yet reapplied? Yeah, I was. Uh, I've already been in touch with the secretary's office, and we are in process. Okay. <laughs> and then for swearing in, um, is Nicole on? Let's see. Nicole Hartson. She is. Nicole, have you swore? Oh, wait. You were swearing in tomorrow? Tomorrow. 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 Okay. So that's 10 for Nadia. We've already spoke. And then um, Alexandra Nestat, when did you plan on swearing in? So I can just have an update on that. I have uh, tried to go a few times. I just haven't been able to make it work with my um, son's schedule. So my husband is going to drive me this afternoon. Okay. And we're just okay. taking him with. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Um, pending. So pending appointments, we have um, Nicola Tran from DHCD. Uh, I believe she has already applied. She is on um, in today's meeting. So N Nicola, have you heard anything back from them yet by any chance? No, I have not. Okay. Okay. And then um, just to let everybody know, Dr. Rogers has um, officially sent in his resignation, resignation um, as a commission member. So I do not believe he will be joining us um, for future meetings. Um, so I, um, yeah, he's, he's regretfully, you know, he had to leave the commission uh, due to health issues. So um, we wish him all the best. Um, uh, and Wendy, this is Cliff. I will, um, I've already indicated to Ruth Ann, I will work with her and the commission uh, to reach out to MedCi and uh, other medical organizations uh, to look for uh, a suitable replacement. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, and our vacant positions, we still have um, representative of owner of rental property built after 1949. And um, Dr. Rogers did actually reach out to me in an email saying he um, will also make some, try to make some contacts to see if he can get a replacement. Um, and then trying to still look for a member of the House and Senate um, to represent in the commission. So those that's the status of where we are um and i can let's see just uh I'll, I'll work on the house and senate members to uh, make sure that the secretary is bringing it up in her meetings with uh, their their team okay that's great that sounds good um so next on the agenda we have cat i'm sorry if i'm going to pronounce this wrong Ga galner is that correct so go good now Goganauer, Goganauer. Mm -hmm. Okay. When yeah. We, yes. Go ahead, Cliff. Um, uh, since we have three new commissioners, and Ruth and I, we didn't talk beforehand about having them introduce themselves and a little bit about what they were okay. wanted yeah, to yeah. do. I wondered whether or not, since we're doing the, the doing this right now, it might be worth spending a couple of minutes to hear from our new commissioners uh, just a little bit about themselves and uh, how they come to the commission. Absolutely. So, um, uh, Alexandra Nestat, um, would you like to introduce yourself and a little bit about you and uh, a little bit about how you come to the commission and what you are interested in uh, uh, in in sort of hearing about and doing uh, as part of your work on the commission? Uh, yeah, sure. Um... So my name is, well, I, I go by Allie um, Nestat. And um, uh, so my son, when he was 15 months old, was diagnosed uh, with a very high level of lead. Um, and uh, so he needed two rounds of collation um, treatment. And um, Barb Moore was um, the head of his uh, health care team. Um, and uh as we work together for still my son just turned three um and we still uh, go to barb every um other month for lead testing um, uh, we just lost you ally we just lost your sound uh oh did it come back 
I can I can I hear you, Al. So we lost sound. I can hear you. <laughs> oh, you can. oh, everybody else can hear. We lost sound. Oh, you guys Fabulous. lost sound. Oh no. Is it? Yeah, I I I would suggest somebody calling in saying? on the cell phone and dialing in. That way you can I'm get the audio. That's weird. I don't understand why. That generally doesn't happen. No. Keep introducing yourself, and we'll deal with it. <laughs> yeah. No. Okay. Just go ahead. We'll okay. catch up. Um, uh, so yeah, I basically Barb told me about and the commission smart. and, uh, suggested me and, um, <laughs> so now I'm here, I would like to learn more about it. I honestly was in a um, big well, days during this. our treatment time. Um, I want, and I oh, want to do anything go. that I can to help no. other kids. No. Hopefully not what ever get left poisoning. Back on Tyler. What do you think? Uh, oh, yeah. Give me one Okay, I had to mute them because they were <laughs> getting. I'm sorry about that. Um, That's they were okay. A I have a bit... toddler, so that that was easy for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, I might have to step away and go down and call IT to get them reconnected. I'm not exactly sure what happened, um, but why don't we have? Um, they can see, see us, and they'll be able to hear us. Yeah. Yeah, they can yeah, they see us. See I muted them, them, so they'll have to unmute. Sorry, oh, sorry. and now you got an echo feedback. Somebody's calling in. Yep. Yeah. You might have to. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Can you guys hear us now? Can you hear us? Shake your head if you can hear us. Okay. Why can't we hear you? Okay, we can hear you, and we can, and you can hear okay. us. Okay, good, good, good. We're on, we're on my laptop now. Okay, um, so, Allie, we're sorry about that. Um, yeah, that's okay. Yes, it's the joys, it's the joys of hybrid meeting. <laughs> hey, that's the first time this has ever happened, I believe, since our start of hybrid, right? Yes, we've never had any technical problems at all yeah. ever. <laughs> <laughs> and and it, and we've yeah. never had any problems with technology in the state ever. Right, right, exactly. And and also, world peace has broken out, and there are dancing <laughs> unicorns in the lobby. Oh my goodness! Um, so let's have um, Nicole. Sorry, I Allie. I don't remember Nicole if you've ever introduced yourself um, before, um, but can you in reintroduce yourself and just tell us a little bit about yourself? I sure will. Um, Nicole Hart. Um, well, just a little bit about me. I was born and raised in Baltimore City. Um, I am a proud parent of two adult children. And what I will say intrigues me most about my lead work is that after they turn 21, I start getting notices from prior residences that um, they had been um, affected by lead paint. So that just as a parent, that made me look at some of the struggles that they went through in school, not because at back then when my kids were in school, um, it was 10 or above. So they were never flagged for having um, issues with like their pain, but they did have issues with learning. And so just knowing the work that I do now is saying, OK, well, they were probably affected by the lead paint and that affected them in school. But fast forward to today, I've been with the city of Baltimore since 2008. Um, I was the previous director of the light intake and assessment unit um, before I was appointed deputy commissioner in 2020. And so um, I am deputy commissioner, like I said, of home ownership and housing preservation, uh, where the lead has a reduction program for the city of Baltimore sits, um, our office of home rehabilitation, and our Office of Weatherization, the Light Intake and Assessment Unit, and a few other programs. So um, I think that's it. Okay, and our, our last um, new commissioner is Nadia Hutchison, and she is in person. She, she is. I'm going to hand her the... I'll also switch over. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Nadia. Uh, I, as I said, I'm an organizer with Young, Gifted, and Green, the Baltimore organizer. Uh, my background's in public health and environmental health. Um, I got my master's in environmental health at Hopkins um, and have been pretty connected to the Hopkins community on environmental health ever since. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to, to be a part of the commission. I don't have any kids, but I've worked a lot with children. Um, I used to be an after-school counselor 
um, at 901 Arts um, and did a lot of work <laughs> in talking about the impact of lead poisoning on the kids that we were working with. Um, but yeah, also really connected and interested in the impacts of climate change on different chemical exposures. Um, exposure risk was my like specialty at Hopkins. Um, and I have done a lot of organizing around lead in other cities as well, um, specifically New Orleans, who last year New Orleans had an extreme like lead exposure situation due to uh, salt water uh, corrosion and entering into their pipes and it, like a huge um, exposure of lead because salt water entered into their, their system. Um, and as Maryland is a uh, coastal city, um, really interested in making sure that Maryland state is in a place um, where we can be thinking about the impacts of climate change on lead exposure as well. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'm pulling up the agenda <clears throat> and we have next on there, um, Kat Gowner. Gogenauer. Gogenauer, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, it's a hard one for me to remember, Gogenauer. Okay, Assistant Secretary, DHCD. She's gonna give us an update on Just Communities. Um, Kat, do you have any slides that you wanted to share or anything like that? I didn't know if you needed me to hand over the screen control to you. At this time, I, I didn't have slides, okay. but I did just share for reference um, the Just Communities Act in the in the chat. It's um, just two and a half, half pages. I'll be referencing it, but in case people aren't familiar, I thought to share that. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, Ms. Gogenauer, thank you so much for being here, and uh, we're looking forward to the presentation. Excellent. Thank you. Um, thank you all uh, for this invitation, um, and thank you for your grace as we are building out and launching the Division of Just Communities in support of the implementation of the Just Communities Act, which, as I've shared, I've dropped into the um, chat. And so we are the newest division here at Maryland Department of Housing and Community Development. Um, we were enabled by the Just Communities legislation. I was brought on, appointed in December of 2023. So we are um, hitting the ground running. Um, our legislation was signed uh, by Governor Moore April 25th, 2024. And I will speak a little bit about uh, the legislation. I've been asked to also speak to how it might align with work around the EPA, just communities, um, and you know, our, our hope to use lead as an indicator as part of how we designate um, these very specific geographies to change um, outcomes. So after that, I will uh, take any kind of comments or questions. Um, but as I said, I've, I've provided the legislation um, for you to go alongside, or as I give a higher level, something to reference going forward. So as I shared in 2024, the legislative session, the Maryland Department of Housing and Community Development introduced our only departmental bill um, and its partners in the General Assembly passed House Bill 241, Senate Bill 308 um, without amendment. And it creates a just community designation that will be applied to certain areas in Maryland. Um, the General Assembly found that the state must have just communities in order to one, affirmatively advance equity, civil rights, racial justice, and equal opportunities in the state. Um, number two, create opportunities for the improvement of communities that have been historically underserved with anticipated benefits for the entire state. And three, right the wrongs of the past when the state systematically excluded certain groups from equal participation in the benefits of public resources. And so the intent is that the designation will be used to prioritize state funding to increase racial, economic, and health equity in the state. Uh, the governor, on the recommendation of the DHCD secretary, will um, designate an area as a just community if the secretary can demonstrate that past and current trends in home ownership, uh, property values, commercial and residential vacancies, and business or housing investment show a need for reinvestment in the area, and that the area has been negatively impacted by a history of forms of legal racial segregation, including redlining, exclusionary zoning, or racially restrictive covenants. 
Um, the de demolition of residential neighborhoods through the use of eminent domain or state or federal funding. Um, and state imprisonment rates higher than 750 per 100,000 persons. And then the part that's most relevant to this conversation today, unequal exposure to, to environmental and health hazards, including proximity to federal Superfund sites, um, estimated exposure to lead-based paint, and rates of asthma among adults that are higher than the 90th percentile of the state. So uh, in sum, that is the, the heart and the spirit of the, the Just Communities legislation. Um, and the Division of Just Communities has been set up, as I've shared, um, to build out and um, create the evidence base for this kind of designation process. It, we're hoping to um, have everything completed and ready by fiscal year 26. Um, and in order to do that, we're taking a very comprehensive approach. Um, so to the question of how we're considering EPA um, and other um, kind of distressed communities tools or the CDC's um, social vulnerability index or HUD's racial ethnic areas of concentrated poverty. We're actually doing an analysis across all of these um, to really understand what just communities can bring forward that's additive um, and ensuring that we're not duplicating efforts or recreating the wheel. Also knowing that a lot of revision is happening around mapping tools um, at the federal level and also statewide. So wanting to be in conversation and figure out what are the best metrics, um, the best indicators that we can feed into this index for just communities that will be um, disaggregated at the census tract level. Um, in the first instance, within priority funding areas, uh, that's by virtue of the legislation, but looking at um, currently the deterior deteriorated paint index, um, we're also looking at Justice 40 tracks. Um, we're looking at MDE's climate and economic justice screening tool. We're also looking at FEMA's climate and environmental justice screening tools. So our hope is to bring all of this together with a, a local university partner who's been um, very excited about what we've been able to pull together as we've called our, our Just Communities 1.0 prototype map and think about how do we make a user tool that is something that isn't only relative to or relevant for DHCD given that the governor's um, designation will fall across um, state funding. So we also want to ensure that we're able to bring forward um, data that's usable um, by our sister agencies, also community members, advocates, um, to really understand how this investment can, can be the most impactful um, in helping us to get to those economic um, and health equity outcomes um, disaggregated by race uh, where possible. So that is the main component of the work. We're also developing a displacement risk tool, trying to anticipate what some of this investment could look like in places that have been historically disinvested or divested, knowing that you know disinvestment disinvestment often leads to um, to lower capacity or lack of institutions that might be able to partner with our efforts. So our goal is also um, to build up local capacity and knowledge to be a part of this process of which the designation will last for five years. So I see Chair Norton has a hand raised and, and that was um, the end of my opening remark. So looking forward to your thoughts and questions. So Kat, uh, welcome. Uh, welcome to the journey, the mission, the goal. Um, you know the assignment, and I'm so pleased that the governor has you uh, leading this effort. Um, one question. Uh oh, I'm so sorry, Chair Norton. I'm unable to hear. I there, I'm here. sorry. Uh, I don't know if you heard me, but I said thank you for taking this journey and mission and accepting this assignment um, that is so critical and important. Um, I wondered in the, are you using the EPA's disadvantaged communities as one of the one of the tools? Did I miss that, or is that one of the tools you're using? It is. It's one of the base maps we're looking at. The overburdened, underserved, distressed communities. I know the name is kind of in flux, um, <laughs> but we know so much work has gone into EPA's uh, impact assessment work for environment, for economy, and for social impact, health 
uh, impact. Um, that yes, we are, are planning to see what we can find, but we also know that these um, EPA dollars are slated to come out, the Justice 40 dollars, exactly, the thriving communities um, resources are, are set to launch soon, and would love to make, uh, in partnership with our sister agencies, a way to um, ensure that those funds are getting where the need is greatest. Yeah, a couple of quick things. The Thriving Communities portal is open. Perfect. Uh, we had 4,000 downloads of the RFA, mm. um, uh, the majority of which it appears were not from Maryland, not that the majority should be from Maryland because it is not one of the largest states uh, in the region of Pennsylvania, of West Virginia, Virginia, uh, Delaware, Maryland, and D.C. Um, but it is open. We are hopeful that your office will help to spread the word to parts of Maryland that are un often unseen, unheard um, for these efforts of environmental justice uh, and uh, just communities work. Um, clearly, there's the Tic Tacs for sure um, that are happening. But one thing that I'd just like to bring, uh, I have raised before, and as the greenhouse gas emission dollars go out, and as we electrify, decarbonize, and put solar on houses, the one thing that is certain is that we will be disturbing a lot of lead-based paint, um, posing either a, a severe risk or an opportunity on lead. Um, and uh, I know the state failed this year in its efforts to get a lead grant. Um, I want to just offer again GHHI and others here to support the state in reapplication uh, for those critical resources. Um, and also to think about from a just communities angle, um, the need to be very educational, uh, very standard driven, um, and very importantly, thinking about making sure we take lead out of housing while we are having to do the necessary health and safety work in order to receive and implement dollars as restorative justice on uh, electrification, on solar. Um, you cannot electrify a, a leaky house, right? You have to clean that up while we're doing that. Uh, we should clean up the lead paint. By doing it, we're going to improve the health of children, the stability of housing and health building. So I just uh, I ask you keep that in mind. Uh, call on us, uh, both our my organization and many others around the table here as partners in support of your work. And just thank you again. Thank you, Chair. Um, I will definitely um, make available um, the Thriving Communities link. We've just launched our Just Communities website, meaning it's live, but we're coming up with a communication strategy um, and pushing that out more broadly. So I think this is a, an amazing resource that we can also highlight. Um, do you mind me asking on the point of the state failure to get the lead grant, who led on that application and who we might be able to to speak with that's a DA. Uh, we can talk about it offline, but it's Department of Housing and Community Development. Um, okay, great. and just it wasn't awarded. I mean, we can look at it as didn't meet the threshold for award, right? Um, and we want to get the state there, uh, for sure, okay. and uh, help to get other jurisdictions, um, these dollars. And you know, I think. Uh, the city of Baltimore, who's long been a grantee, could be a good partner in helping to think that through um, for sure. But we have such need around the state uh, for these uh, things. And this will become more important with the climate dollars and the investment there. Um, so, and also, uh, Kato, just invite you to uh, see our work on the ground in Baltimore um, if it is of help as you to think about just communities throughout. Uh, but I'm going to stop talking, go offline. Um, I'm losing my voice and let others. Um, uh, and Cliff, uh, your hand is up. Yes. And I, I, I may call on myself, although uh, I will also look to see if there are others who have other comments. Um, so um, Nadia Hutchinson has a comment and a question, I believe. Yeah, I um, you mentioned that you were working with the university. I was wondering if y'all have spoken to or are working with the University of Maryland just because of their Maryland EJ screen um, that has a lot of the same environmental data that y'all are 
causing bleeding? Mm -hmm. Thank you for that question. We we have been in conversation with Dr. Sakubi Wilson, um, the UMD yep. School of Public Health. Um, I think there are multiple strategies I can say from my perspective as a certified community health worker and former life. Um, I would love for us to engage as many state um, universities as possible. I think being a part of this kind of legal structure for our young people, for our community members, ensures one, that it's sustainable, but also that it's really meaningful. Um, and a lot of what we'll be looking forward to doing in 2025 is community involvement, you know, to the chair's point about um, education um, as a form of power, especially in determining where resources are allocated or, or even being able to quantify the need um, and understand prioritization, I think that would be great. So I appreciate that question. And we are doing our best to engage everyone possible, um, especially in the lead up uh, to fiscal year 26. So, you know, June 2025. Um, so if, there, if anybody has, has any recommendations, additional people we should engage um, for any reason. We are definitely grateful for that. As I said, we're we're just about nine months old at this point. So looking forward to our one year anniversary in December and then being able to start bringing um, multitudes of the tools we're working on out to community um, through design processes, design charrettes, um, for them to actually be the architects of the solutions that will inform not just what we're able to do, you know, but what local government, municipal government, um, what sister agencies can do in support of their efforts. Thank Thanks, Nadia. Um, uh, Ms. Goganauer, this is Clifford Mitchell. I'm the director of the Environmental Health Bureau at the Department of Health. Uh, you may have had some conversations with Shuba Chandar, our deputy director, mm -hmm. but um, as you probably know, we work together with the Department of uh, Environment on lead and lead data, and I manage and run the state's asthma control program as well. So um, we are, uh, we and our epidemiologists uh, who actually prepare the lead and asthma data with the Department of the Environment in the case of um, the lead data. And we have our lead and asthma home visiting programs in health departments across the state. Um, we are looking forward to working with you uh, and uh, uh, are absolutely thrilled to be able to uh, join you in this effort. Thank you for that. Um, I'm very excited to learn that. Do you have any recommendations about data sets that we should be looking at that might be more updated, more timely, um, whether they have been geospatially mapped, um, whether you would like that to be a feature of just communities if it's not already? So we actually have a portal called the Environmental Public Health Tracking Portal where we have lead data and asthma data uh, uh, geomapped and geolocated at the census tract level with both counts and rates uh, and work with the Department of the Environment uh, on that for the lead data and we do it for the asthma data. So we have the data sets downloadable at the census tract level. We also uh, are happy to talk with you about uh, the analysis of those data. There are some nuances always when you look at health data, and we are delighted to work with you on that. This is actually music to my ears this morning. I, I have been um, in close conversation with MDE, um, Assistant Secretary Atkinson, um, also DNR. I'm yep. really trying to understand what kind of data we have uh, inside the state and then what the value is of looking at more of these nationwide federal um, mapping tools. But we welcome the opportunity. I will definitely check out this resource. And yes, I've spoken with Shuba um, just as part of the Sustainable Communities Refresh. And I'm very excited. Yep. As I said, public health is my, is my first passion. <laughs> Well, uh, welcome and please just, uh, I'm going to put my email in the chat and you can just uh, shoot me an email. Thank you, sir. So thank you very, very much for that. Are there any other questions um, on this exciting uh, and uh, obviously complicated uh, program and initiative. If not, 
um, uh, why don't we move on? Uh, and thank you, Ms. Guggenau. We're, we're looking forward to having you back at the commission. I'm sure that Ruth Ann is looking forward to having you back at the commission on a frequent basis uh, and to support to supporting you in this initiative. So um, we are absolutely uh, delighted and any assistance we can offer, um, uh, we are happy to do so. Um, uh, as as Wendy noted, uh, the EPA will not be here, and Ruth Ann's already talked about the revision to the elevated blood lead uh, uh, threshold by HUD. Um, so uh, I think this is the point at which, uh, Paula, are you going to talk about lead poisoning prevention awareness week? Uh, I mean, Tyler, I can't. Who's going to talk? I Paula. can talk. I, I, um, uh, and Shadia. Are you on the call too? Shadi is right there. Oh, I am on the call. Hi, Hi Shadia. Hello, Paula. Thank you for that. So we, um, MDH and MDE and um, DHCD and Baltimore City Health Department have been having annual, um, excuse me, weekly meetings uh, to celebrate the Lead Poisoning Prevention Week. One of the things that we are really um, trying to hone in on this year, um, in addition to the message of our federal partners, is to um, include our 30-year celebration of the Reduction of Lead Risk and Housing Act. For some of you that may not be aware, that is the law that was enacted enacted um, in 1994, which is our primary prevention law, which goals were to prevent childhood lead poisoning um, while maintaining affordable housing in pre-1950, now 1978, residential rental properties. And it required owners to perform um, certain treatments on rental properties prior to tenants moving in and at certain other triggering um, events. So we have a jam-packed um, agenda for um, Lead Poisoning Prevention Week, which begins on October 20th of 2024. Uh, there is um, a calendar of events which will be finalized, um, Shadi, correct me if I'm wrong, probably within the next week or so. And uh, the press event is going to be happening in Baltimore, followed by a community event. Um, and that will, the press event will be on October, October 21st at 1 p.m. Um, and I believe that Wendy shared information on the press event. And there's a bunch of other events that are going on, in particular, one going on in, in Prince George's County. I believe that is happening on Thursday, where Wendy Boone is inviting um, many um, different um, individuals and companies uh, to partake in a, a lead awareness um, campaign. We're also working on um, social media campaign, which is going to hone in on not just the testing of children, but to ensure that pregnant women or women that want to become pregnant um, are, are tested. And there's going to be a different um, theme for every single day. We're working on that as well. Shadia? from our lovely Shadia from GHHI, who has been facilitating this, all of this, who I cannot thank en enough. Um, I, I just want to see if there's anything else she may want to add. Thank you, Paula. Now that was super comprehensive. And I want to really thank you guys for all of your support and planning this week. Um, I'm really excited for all the events that we have planned. Um, so I really want to thank you, Paula. I want to thank Cliff, Theo, Adana, um, Joyce, um, for really just guiding us through this process, guiding me through this process as I am new to this. Um, but it's been really awesome to collaborate. Um, so again, the biggest thing I want to hone in on is that our press conference and community day is on that Monday, um, October 21st. The press conference will be about 1 to 1.45 and the community day will be directly following from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. And those will be located at Baltimore Unity Hall in Baltimore City. 
um, with the um, community day happening across the street at Utah Meridian Park um, outside. And it's going to be a really fun, beautiful event. Um, again, we are partnering with PG County to do kind of like a lunch and learn with the community as well as with nurses and health workers. Um, we're doing a Baltimore City Schools tour where we'll be going around with our Derek the Dinosaur, um, doing some reading and some education about lead poisoning, prevention education for families and for students as well. Um, we are also hoping to plan a canvassing effort with Young, Gifted and Green um, with Nadia. Um, we've been working with Nadia and DPW um, to really ensure that we are getting this lead service line um, canvassing um, out um, in the community, um, knocking on doors, ensuring that people are testing their pipes. Um, so we really want to do a large canvassing effort. Again, that's kind of in the works um, right now. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a really awesome week. And again, I want to thank you all for um, your support and planning and making sure that this week uh, is really fun, engaging, and exciting. And and Wendy, this is Cliff. Um, we will uh, distribute the calendar to the commission as soon as it's finalized. Uh, and I think, uh, I'm assuming, without having checked with Ruth Ann about this or with MDE, but obviously the commission will be invited to the press event uh, and will uh, be uh, also informed of all the other events. So if the commissioners are located uh, where they have access to those events, they are more than welcome to attend any or all of them. Wendy, did I share that link with you? I have to double check because I don't, I don't recall it. Uh -oh. Shadia, is it okay if I share that? Press it. Okay. I absolutely <laughs> not that commissioners have received yet. I I apologize. I thought I had sent it, but Wendy, I'll make sure that um, I get that to you. Okay. Fantastic. Um, and anything else, Shadia, that you uh, needed to add to that? I think that was it. Fantastic. Uh, and uh, um, Ms. Goganauer, if you're still on, uh, I put the link to environmental public health tracking to our data portal for asthma and lead in the chat. So if you are still on, uh, I just put that in the chat for you. Obviously, also the rest of you, because it has lead data from the Department of the Environment on it as well. Um, okay, very good. Uh, sorry, there was a hand? No, oh, there's I no hand. Saying thank you. <laughs> ah, well, all right, great. Thanks, Ms. Goganauer. Thank you very much. All right, um, Tyler? Sure. Uh, first update has already happened, and then my second update was uh, lead poisoning prevention week because I didn't read the agenda first. Uh, so I have nothing else but Fred Banks. Is there anything you want to share from the program? Uh, just that we are uh, finishing up, sending out a big round of uh, notices of violations and uh, phone calls have been crazy. And But uh, we are getting a lot of uh, feedback from the community um, to get their properties registered and to get up to date so those things are, are going well so um but thanks for all the help uh, i've been working with baltimore city on a couple other um uh, difficult cases and appreciate julie for helping out with that uh, other than that uh, things are going well with uh, the lead program thank you i'll add a big shout out to fred and his team uh, with the recent compliance effort as well as uh, tis the season for renewals they are receiving about 600 calls a day and so they have a lot to address, but uh, they're getting through it. Fantastic. Any other MDE updates? That's good. All right. Uh, from the Department of Health, a, a couple of things. Uh, first, we are continuing to work very closely with uh, the Department of Housing and Community Development and Medicaid on some complex uh, home uh, renovations and uh, lead abatement projects as part of the Healthy Homes for Healthy Kids uh, program. And uh, we'll be taking an opportunity. We are redoing some of the promotional material on that. 
Uh, we are very much looking forward to continuing our work with both MDE and the Department of Housing and Community Development to look for opportunities to use Medicaid and CHIP funds to abate lead in owner-occupied homes, um, which is uh, it, which is a process that is um, uh, working with DHCD and with some families in, as Ruth Ann alluded to, um, in, in some families in homes outside of Baltimore City and Baltimore County, uh, in uh, Washington County, on the Eastern Shore and elsewhere, where uh, it's more difficult sometimes to find the kind of resources that are available in Baltimore and Central Maryland. Um, it points out again the sort of challenges that you have when you talk about some of our more rural jurisdictions um, to do lead abatement and even to do the kind of work that we that we don't take for granted, but certainly acknowledge that the programs in ba in Central Maryland, in Baltimore City, Baltimore County, Anne Arundel, even in Prince George's and Montgomery County, um, we look for from an equity point of view how to address some of the lead exposures that take place in more rural uh, uh, parts of the state. So that is an effort that is ongoing and where we're trying very much to ensure that we can bring the same kinds of services that are available here in central Maryland to uh, all the rest of the state. Um, the other thing that's happening is uh, we're working on updating our environmental public health tracking portal um, with data from MDE's Childhood Lead Registry. Um, we will be updating those data, um, and I know that when the new data become available from Shamola Dai and the registry, those will be added for more current years um, to the uh, Environmental Public Health Tracking Portal so that you can see the, the, what's happened with lead over the last several years. Um, I would say that what we've seen in both lead and asthma in terms of identification of cases, and I know Fred and, and uh, his program are aware of this, we are seeing really a rebound from the lower testing rates and lower case rates that we saw in COVID uh, and during COVID. We are seeing those return to normal and sometimes a little higher than normal as people who did not get tested in, during, the, during the pandemic are now uh, really coming back into regular medical care. We are seeing uh, both from a health department point of view and from a, an MDE point of view um, that those rates are really returning to where they are, where they were pre-COVID. Um, and that's really um, uh, the, the only other thing I will say is that um, I want to acknowledge the work by uh, Theo Williams and Adana Patterson, uh, who run the Medicaid CHIP uh, home visiting program in our 11 jurisdictions, and the uh, and who work very closely with DHCD and MDE on the uh, lead abatement program, along with Medicaid. And Theo, I know, is on the uh, call, and uh, I wanted to introduce him and also uh, Donna Patterson. Those are two of the folks who spend a lot of time working with local health departments. Uh, to, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, no worries. Uh, it's the attack of it's the attack of the cell phone, YouTube. Um, uh, but I just wanted to acknowledge their efforts working with all of the local health departments. Um, so that's it for MDH. Theo, did you have anything else that I forgot? Sorry, I've got a truck outside, so it's a little noisy, but no, I don't have anything else. Thank you, Dr. Mitchell. Okay, very good. All right, um, Mangela, uh, anything for any updates from MSDE and the Office of Child Care? Yes, sir. Good morning. Um, we conducted the listen in session to all licensed child care program providers in August um, with the and beginning of the school year, new forms coming into the programs, um, educated again on uh, lead poisoning and importance of MDH uh, lead, uh, lead screening form. Um, so we are, I'm getting more calls about children not tested, like you just informed about um, 
children, not, not many children were tested during COVID. Now they are entering into pre-K programs and questions about like, hey, they didn't have the test until two years of age. What should we do? So those type of questions are being handled now more. And the exciting news is um, we have a child care program type, informal child care program. It is unlicensed, but is approved child care services for children um, whose family members become the child care providers. And they do receive scholarship if they qualify for financial support uh, that's called scholarship a scholarship to those children. Um, we have some around 200 families who are in informal child care programs. And this year, we are requiring late screening for those children. So these are the children who do not go to the licensed child care programs, are not attending any uh, preschool, uh, public school programs or non-public school programs, but being cared by the family members as unlicensed child care providers, but they are approved providers. So this year, the informal child care program is requiring those families to submit the late screening form as a part of the application requirement. Mm -hmm. So I have been conducting a health and safety update and importance of late screening and prevention and the form requirement for these uh, providers and the families um, for the last four sessions. And we will be concluding the training this evening. So that's new and exciting, including new population to the late testing and uh, bringing those children into the late, late, late testing sessions. Thank you. Thanks, Mangela. And, and by the way, Mangela, um, you may have heard from Nancy Cervetas or elsewhere, but we also have now the Form 4620, the lead testing form in Spanish. It's available on our website. Oh, that's a great news. So we should be able to download that and put it on our site also. That's yep. a great news. Thank you. Yep. Yep. All right, uh, Maryland Insurance Agents uh, Administration. Okay, I don't see Benita on. I didn't see Benita. Yeah, either. she's not on. Okay. All right. Uh, for the Department of Housing and Community Development, uh, who's Nicola? Nicola. Tram? Yes, there you are. Okay. Great. Um, I'm still here. Um, all right, so on our end, um, we are um, continuing to working um, to integrate the um, our repair programs with the energy programs. Um, that has been an ongoing effort on our side um, to make a seamless process for any applicant to access both um, energy and repair funds through one process. Um, as part of that effort, we're going to, um, we're right now revising our website um, so that the front end better corresponds with that process to customers, and that will hopefully be published within the next um, month. Um, outside of that, um, we are um, also, we have applied for um, a, a couple um, um, new federal funds. One of them is the lead hazard um, reduction. Um, grant program um, with HUD and are hoping to hear back on that soon so that we can expand our lead remediation um, programs efforts. Um, Jack, do you have anything else to add? No, I think you've covered everything. Sorry, I apologize. Okay, thank you very much, Nicola and, and Jack. Um, uh, Commissioner Hart. Uh, hi, it's me again. So I'm going to let Kat speak to the LED program, but I just want to talk about what we have uh, going on at DHCD really quick. So um, for those that don't know, tomorrow is our second um, town hall meeting where we are, um, DHCD is um, developing its first ever citywide housing plan. And uh, these town hall meetings are um, basically to articulate the actions um, and give the data-driven results um, and just to include the community um, in us developing our plan. 
So the, the uh, meeting is virtual. Um, it's in person at Baltimore Polytechnic Institute on this coming Saturday, 10 to 12. Um, and then there's a virtual link. I'll put the flyer in the chat. Um, so we have that going on. Um, and just um, for those that don't, don't know, also, we are right now working through our vacant reduction strategy, where we are um, looking to push to uh, reduce vacants um, with a 15 year timeline. And so just to know that our lead hazard reduction program is included in that strategy, um, where my division sits is about the prevention of vacants. And that's how we see um, lead hazard reduction fitting into the strategy. Uh, the other thing that I have, um, I have a new director. Well, I have a new assistant commissioner uh, who is the direct supervisor to my construction programs. And that's Ms. Brick Paluzzi. Some of you may know her and have worked with her in other capacities. Um, and so she just started this past Monday. And so we are working to get her up to speed. Um, at some point, you may see her on this meeting to be introduced to everybody. Um, but then now I will defer to Kat to give specific lead hazard reduction updates. Thank you, Nicole. Hi, everybody. Um, uh, some updates on our end is that we have also applied for uh, the new HUD lead hazard reduction grant. We're also waiting to hear if we are awarded uh, so we can continue our capacity to do lead remediation work in Baltimore City. Right now, we still do have an active grant, which has been making some great progress. Um, and right now we are in the process of in trying to add more contractors to our grant to get some more work done quickly. Uh, so we have been trying to scout um, as many as we can as possible. Uh, any other updates in regards to our outreach? We have been doing a lot of community events and we have actually recently upgraded all of our um, flyers and brochures to include five different languages. So if anyone is interested uh, to have copies of those now translated documents, I'll be happy to send it to you if you just leave your uh, email in the chat. Um, and I think that's all of my updates for today too. Thank you so much, both of you. Uh, Commissioner DiGirolamo. Hello. Um, my team and I are working to prepare for um, lead week. Um, one of the big things that we'll be doing is doing testing at our immunizations clinic um, that Thursday. Um, so we are really working to promote that, um, that we'll be doing that testing on Thursday, the 24th. Um, again, that's at our immunizations clinic at 1200 Bayette Street. Anything else, Julie? That was it. Okay, fantastic. I am not going to call on Ruth Ann Norton and I'm not going to let her speak. So Wes uh, or Shadia, um, uh, anybody else from GHHI other than Ruth Ann Norton? Wes? Yeah, just wanted to echo Ruth Ann. I uh, wanted to thank the Department of the State for you know investing in the lead poisoning prevention program. Uh, the new funding that Ruth Ann mentioned will pay for additional tenants' rights and case management assistance for lead affected families and preventive. It'll provide for rental property owner compliance assistance. Um, it will actually, as Ruth Ann mentioned, a family advocate attorney to represent tenants and non-compliant properties to have lead hazards uh, remediated. It will also have an outreach component and one to make everyone aware that we have two positions. One is a family advocate attorney and one is an outreach associate to work with Shadi as well um, that are open positions. If you know of good candidates, please send them. Um, Jeanette Richardson, our senior VP, uh, would love to have those um, referrals in. So two new positions that will be funded with that uh, work. So thanks again. Thanks, Wes. Anything else? Um, uh, Commissioner Hutchinson. Hi, Liz. This is Nadia. Um, I run a listserv called the Be More Just Transition Network. We have like 90-ish people in it. Um, so happy if you send me the job description to just put it in the network and see if there's any like Baltimore local folks that are already pretty interested in environmental justice that might be interested in applying. Okay, terrific, thank you much. 
Fantastic. Thank you, Nadia. All right. Um, uh, moving on, any other commissioner comments or updates from other commissioners? We are looking around the completely empty table here and nobody's raising their his or her or their hand. And around the Wendy and anybody else? No, nope, no hands raised, no comments coming in. All right. Uh, at this point, I will turn to public comments. Are there any members of the public who wish to make a statement? All right. So um, as you will see from the highlighted text that Wendy has so thoughtfully highlighted, uh, <laughs> the next meeting is Thursday, November 7th, which is obviously election week. Uh, so nothing much happening that week, really. Um, uh, those of you uh, who are able, um, this will be also, I'm looking at Wendy. Wendy, is this a hybrid, completely in person, completely mixed? No. What? hybrid they're going to be hybrids hopefully we won't have any more technical difficulties we appreciate you having your laptop there so we can still hear you guys yes well you know my boy scout model be prepared um <laughs> uh or whatever scout it was uh but yes so uh and we're always happy to see you here at mde if you want to come in person uh but otherwise we look forward to seeing you at the next meeting <laughs> Are you waving your head because you want to say something? No, I just, I'm waving to everybody. Yes. Come see us. Yes. No, you have your camera off, Cliff. Uh, right, exactly. No, Paula is looking <laughs> at the big screen. All oh, right. Okay. Um, so otherwise, if there are no other comments, I will entertain a motion to adjourn, which is not debatable under Robert's rules of order. So once you make it, you better be confident. Is there a so motion moved. to adjourn? Adam second. gave a motion and Barbara. Second. Yep. Okay. And okay. without debate, uh, all those in favor say aye. aye. All aye. right. Aye. Thank you all very much, everybody. Have a lovely week. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you in November.